Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Ben Falcons Media Corner back again with a brand new AKF for a soul review episode for today. This is going to be my review on a film that I sold last year in 2021, which is this one. I really wanted to review this film straight away after I saw this movie, which I saw this back in October of last year. But for that month, I was really busy because there was a lot of things that was coming out that I was seeing, and as well as with me be, and I was also being busy at work as well. So. But since I'm off work, I feel like I should get this review over and done with. So today's review is going to be my review on the 2021 horror slasher film. And this is the next next installment to this uh, famous franchise that we all know and love from the horror genre. And this is the 12th installment of this franchise. And that movie is Halloween Kills. Now Halloween Kills, this is the sequel to the 2018 um, Halloween film, which was just simply called Halloween. And which that was directed by David Gordon Green, so he has returned in the director's in the director's chair to direct the next installment of the Halloween franchise. In which, in this movie, this is set after the events of the last film, where we see Laurie Strode is back once again, played by Jamie Lee Curtis and her family. They thought they have destroyed Michael Michael Myers once and for all, but unfortunately, they have not destroyed him because he because because. Uh, for what ha what they did to him is that they trapped him in a burning house and they left him to die. But the firefighters they come to basically put out the fire and then Michael Myers escapes from the burning house and he goes on a massive killing spree. And for the whole community who live in the small town that we all know from the original Halloween movies, they have grown sick and tired of uh, Michael Myers because of the the killing sprees that he's doing in the small town. And so they decide to basically join along with Laurie Strode and the family to basically destroy Michael Myers once and for all. So that's pretty much the story of Halloween Kills. Now, for the last um, Halloween film that we did get, which was released back in 2018, just called Halloween, basically, which was directed by David Gordon Green, I did not get a chance to see that one in the cinemas in that year because I wasn't old enough to see it. And I didn't watch every single Halloween film when that was about to come out, but when this was about to come out, I did watch all of them in preparation for this. Um, for the original John Carpenter film, I could definitely agree with it. I could definitely agree with it. One, it's an absolute classic. Uh, Halloween 2 was pretty good, but wasn't great. Um, Seas of the Witch, I didn't like that one. Uh, the Return of Michael Myers was okay, as well as uh, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Uh, the Curse of Michael Myers, I think it was, I thought that one was just crap. Um, H2O um, was much better than 3, 4, 5, and 6, but wasn't as good as the first two. I thought that was decent. And Resurrection, I can, I can, I can definitely agree with everyone. It's absolutely the worst of the franchise. That one was just way crap crapper than um uh than uh the curse of michael myers and season of the witch and for the two rob zombie movies um i'm not really a fan of those ones but for the the last halloween film uh which was directed by david gordon green in 2018 i thought that was a great entry to the franchise and it, and it was way better than the sequels and most definitely the rob zombie movies and um and for him uh, coming back to the director's chair, the director's chair to direct the next installment of the franchise, I was looking forward to seeing what he can do for the next installment of this franchise. And it was great to see Jamie Lee Curtis reprising a role, rep reprising a role as Laurie Strode from the last movie. And um, I didn't see this on opening day when it was first released because I went I went to see some other things at the time that was released the exact same day as this, which were Venom Let There Be Carnage and The Last Duel. And and this and then after them I went to see this one. And after watching this one. Unfortunately, this one was a minor step down to the franchise because this one wasn't as good as the last Halloween film, which was a big disappointment. But I wouldn't say this is the worst in the franchise since Resurrection or even The Curse of Michael Myers or even the the Seas of the Witch or even the Rob Zombie movies. This one, I can just say, is just a mediocre entry to the Halloween franchise. I didn't hate everything about Halloween Kills because there's quite a few things to enjoy out of this movie. Like, Jamie Lee Curtis is still great as Laurie Strode, even though she's not in the movie that much, because there's a reason why. Because for a character, she's recovering from her injuries after the last film, although she still wants to get up and kill Michael Myers. And as for everyone else, I thought they gave solid performances enough. And the first few 10 minutes in this movie, um, I thought was pretty interesting because I had a few callbacks to the original Halloween movie. And it has some characters who did survive uh, Michael Myers' killing spree and all that, which I thought that was pretty interesting. And it's pretty well paced too, since this movie's only an hour and 45 minutes. It never dragged on to make this movie boring whatsoever, really. And the kills in this movie, I thought some of the kills were fine, but for the rest of the kills, honestly, they just feel absolutely ridiculous, really, for the way it's directed. Because the direction just wasn't that great. Which is shocking because for David Gordon Green's directing talent for the last film, he directed so well done for combining suspense and and for suspect for thrilling suspenseful moments and some entertaining bloody kills. And for when he combined them together, he did it so well done. He made a great movie. 
involved for John Carpenter's original film, um, that one had like 10% of bloody kills. But for that one, it mostly went on for, you know, suspense and thrills. And for John Carpenter, he did so well done, he made a freaking classic. And that's what the original Halloween, the original Halloween movie is well known for. But for the last one that we did get from David Gordon Green, which had some differences, for having, you know, good, which had some great, really good suspense and had some entertaining bloody kills. He did, he did it really well. He did it so well done. But for this film, I don't know what, what the hell happened with this one. Because for the direction of this film, again, just wasn't that great. Because the suspense really, really wasn't that scary. And the kills just honestly feel ridiculous. Because there are some characters, they honestly, there are some, char some characters in this film, they just die in ridiculous ways. Like there's one where a woman wants to kill Michael Myers, but Michael Myers is slaps her and uh, she dies and kills herself which honestly just feels ridiculous and for some of the characters in this movie they do make some dumb choices really and for these kind of other characters they just become the easy targets for michael myers for him to basically find and kill and they and they just feel like they just wanted to die straight away because they're growing sick and tired of michael myers really but in the end guys halloween kills unfortunately this one isn't a good entry to the franchise um but again, it's not the worst in the franchise since Resurrection or Seize the Witch or Curse of Michael Myers or even the Rob Zombie movies. This one was just a mediocre entry to the franchise. And again, I kind of I kind of wish this one could be a lot more better, really. But for what happened with this one, it kind of let it kind of left me disappointed, really, with ridiculous kills, less scary moments, not good, no good direction. But there were some things I did appreciate in this one. Some well acted, some well acted performances. Um, first few minutes, few few things that were. Few, few, a few things that were interesting and uh, it's, it's well paced too and some kills were fine but this one um, again I just kind of wish this one would be a, bit, be, a bit, be a lot more better and for the way it ended like the way it concluded really before what before Halloween ends it's it's, it's kind of getting me a bit curious really because I'm curious to think I'm just kind of curious what the next one's going to be like since this one isn't the last entry to the franchise we got one more that's coming out this year called Halloween Ends again I'm just curious to I'm just curious on what that one is going to be like since this one just wasn't the wasn't that great of a movie here. So that's pretty much all I have to say about Halloween Kills. I'm going to give Halloween Kills two and a half out of five. Like I said, I just kind of wish this one could have been a lot more better to the franchise. But unfortunately for everything else that went wrong with this one, again, it left me disappointed, really. And again, I wouldn't say this is the worst in the franchise. Next to the ones I consider terrible to the franchise. This one was just an okay, an okay entry to the franchise. There were some things I did appreciate in this one. But for everything else that went wrong with this one, it just left me disappointed, really. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching for my AK After a Saw review on Halloween Kills. And let me know what you think of this entry to the franchise if you have seen this already already or if you've just seen this film for the first time if you have missed your chance to see this in cinemas did you have a blast with this or were you very disappointed with this so again thank you so much for watching stay tuned for more reviews and as always this has been Foggins Media Corner signing off